Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The following ten tapes are lessons which Sheikh Nur gave at the first North American Siyaha of the Hashemiyah Darqawiyah order of the Tariqa Shadhiliya, which took place in Herne, Virginia, from January 2nd to the 4th, 1998. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. The people of uh, ascription to Allah subhanahu wa taala, the people who have taken the tariq, and I'm not speaking only of this tariq, but rather the, the Naqshbandi says the the people who have taken any real tariq that is connected with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم by rijal, sheikh from sheikh from sheikh from sheikh from sheikh from the, from the Sahaba, from the Hassan to Ali, to <coughs> the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who have a who have a lineal uh, connected concatenous chain back to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Any of those people are the people of Nisba. They are the Ahlullah, Ahlullah, the people of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and so they are the people whose ibadah, what they're really trying to achieve, what they're trying to gain, is. Allah Himself. Okay, so you know n- none of the other halashi is going to go up and 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 kick the favorite courtier in the knee. <laughs> you know why? Because he's the king's favorite. Okay. Similarly, man adali wali and fakad adam to hubil harb. Okay. Of all of the people, of all of the things in the created universe that Allah that is between the calf and noon that is in this cone of all of the things that is in the created universe, Allah has chosen certain to be mukallafin, to be uh, to be morally responsible, to have the option to win unto Jannah, to win unto Paradise, or on the other hand, to disregard the warnings of the Prophets and to go to to, to hell. Okay, so merely honoring that Allah has honored them, so we show we show respect to every human being because of that fact. Because the wheel is still in spin, okay. The wheel is still in spin, and somebody who's at the bottom of the wheel is going to be at the top at the next moment, you know, because it's still it's still going around, okay. And we're at one point, and then the other people are at the other point. We don't know how it's going to turn out, okay. Allah could turn us into an atheist. He could send us a trial that would knock the iman out of us, and turn us into atheists. When Allah will be turn us into the people that don't understand anything except particles bumping into each other. He could turn us, if he wanted to, into ma- man-worshippers, into Christians. He could t- take away this iman that, that is, uh, has been given to us. Okay, We don't want it to be taken away. What is the sabab? For the, so things, the blessings are not taken away. Thanks. Gratitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why the people term gratitude, the ulama term gratitude, they say it's the side of maqood, waqaid of mawjood. It's the way of hunting blessings that you do not yet have, that you hope to attain. Okay, by thanking Allah for the part of them that you have, and Allah will increase them. And it's the, so it's the, uh, the hunting of the absent, side of maqood, waqaid of mawjood. And it is the, Tying the, the the shackling, the mana, the manacling of the blessings that one ha- that that of that which exists or that which one has. In other words. So we respect all people because we don't know that you could that Allah could make that person a wadi, and he could make you someone taban, someone in a destitute condition, someone in a lamentable condition. But more than this, we receive the, and the believers. It's it's strange. And I've remarked upon this, and it's worthy that we understand that the way that the tremendous imams of the Sawwaf, such as Muhyiddin, Sheikh Muhyiddin, Ibn al and the and the other imams, they have a special nadra. They have a special uh, way of looking at believers. Believers are the are the acme of existence. Believers of the jinn and of the man of mankind, they are the, the peak of existence. Okay, they are the they are the reason, the manifestation of the Sharia is the reason why the universe has been created. And we mentioned this and we talked about this last year. How that the the mulk, the the, the world of, the, of, the, of that we see, the phenomenal realities that we see, 
exist through the spiritual world through the spiritual world because the attributes, the divine attributes manifested by phenomenal realities can only be manifest in their fullest and most uh, complete extent uh, against the backdrop of eternal felicity or eternal perdition as we mentioned yesterday and the spiritual world in turn exists through the absolute presence the absolute oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the worlds the lower worlds to the higher worlds exist the, each the, 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 one that, the ones that are closer to us exist the ones that are uh, farther from our, our reality so in this world the world of, and, and, uh, world of mulk Adam and mulk the highest thing are the believers okay so at the end the, the great Sufis the great Imams of Tisawaf have a special way of looking towards anyone who has ever said La ilaha in the law Muhammadun Rasulullah and I encourage myself so I'm saying this and all of you and anyone who hears these words to have the same opinion you can't say oh well the Muslims that, that, that miserable Muslim he opened up a whiskey store over in Southside Chicago or something what a, what a dirt bag you know, and the, true you know, we, we, we don't, uh, you know, we, we have to have uh, one of the marks of uh, of iman is hubfidah, or bhubfidah, to have love for the sake of Allah and, and hatred, detestation for the sake of Allah. But we don't hate individual people. Nor do we love individual people. Okay, we love them or hate them, according to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of the attribute that is found in them the attribute you know, the fact that this uh, person has opened up a whiskey store over there that's why we hate them if it you know it's just like you know it's nothing personal okay there's nothing personal except our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's the only thing that's personal everything else are just merely the manifestations of Allah including all other people okay the manif- of the manifestations of rahma of the, the the great things that Allah has created and we have to have ta'zim bima adham Allah. Okay, we have to have we have to show reverence towards the things that Allah has raised. We have to raise and show veneration for the things that Allah has raised and made high in this world. Okay, of the highest of them is the iman. Okay. So this man adali wali fakad adan tuhu bil harb. So we mentioned yesterday, you have to have have to understand it. Whoever shows enmity to a friend of mine, I declare war against. And there's nothing that's as terrible as this. This, uh, this. this wording, I declare war against this hadith of Qudsi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fighting such a person, and who's going to win, in parentheses. <laughs> He's only mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has only mentioned in this hadith of Qudsi, the war of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against two kinds of people. Those who harm and offend <coughs> the awliya first, and those who take riba, usury, interest. Okay, so we have to be careful of these two things, very careful. Find out what they entail and avoid them. Okay, if we want to keep our heads on our shoulders with the king. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so we show respect. You know, this is one of the most, uh, one of the, the greatest of the adab. We show respect to all believers. Anyone who has said, La ilaha illallah. And in reality, the adab of the tariqah means you show respect to every th- single thing that Allah has created. Because it's all of it is a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Madahir al haqqi la tu'atu. Wa batin rabbi la tu'atu. La yuhatu. It's part of the qasida, I don't know if it's our, our, our shaykh's qasida or not. He says the manifestations of al haqq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, literally the real are innumerable, are, are infinite. Okay, the manifestations, the ways in which Allah has manifested Himself are limitless, are innumerable, infinite in principle. He said, in the, the inward of my Lord is illimitable. There is something else that the whole tariq may be said to elucidate this latter point, and so I won't dwell on it. Okay. So we have to have respect towards all other people, and we have to have, but in, in particular, of the awliya and the nisba. Okay, the people who have taken the tariq, they're ahlullah. They're people who are 
they're not interested in palaces and they're not interested in Hordalain and they're not interested in other things in the next life but rather as uh, as Arabia El Adawiya said she said she says well, well how come you discount Jannah you know she, she says well I, you know actually you know my principle is El Jar Thumma Dar it's a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it's look to the neighbor first okay when you want to buy real estate what do you look for do you look at this wonderful ho- house it has curb appeal it has you know all this stuff that, no you look at who the neighbors are that's the most important thing because if you have a bad neighbor that's always bugging you and it's always you know I remember subhanallah when I was a little kid we used to practice archery in our backyard and I couldn't figure out where the arrows were going you know, sometimes we'd miss an arrow, you know, we had the target propped up against the hedge. And, uh, was it Mrs. Riser was the one who's next door? Anyway, we went and, uh, you know, we let an arrow fly and, and it disappeared. I went over and there it was, you know, sticking in her door. <laughs> oh no. You know, so was uh, and, and uh, you know, she could, she opened the door, you know, as we were trying to pull out the arrow, and she handed me about six others. <laughs> and so you know, you have to be good neighbors. You know, so. The jars and madars, we don't want neighbors like we were. <laughs> okay. In nisba. Yeah, the nisba. What does that mean? Okay, nisba means what? It means ascription. Yes. Okay, ascription. A nisba adjective is like you say, for example, Iraq. For example, the person with a nisba, a nisba adjective, students, Arabists, but it's a nisba adjective, it is Iraqi. Okay, it has a ya on the end of it, and you form an adjective with it. Okay, and the nisba, when you scribe, uh, it means here, a nisba is, we're talking, what sort of a nisba we're talking about? We're talking about an idafa, nisba idafiya. Okay, and uh, what is a idafa construction in Arabic? It's the X of the Y. The X of the Y. Okay, and how do you make that? You say Sayarat Tariq, for example, Tariq's car, the car of Tariq. Okay, and so the people of Nispa are the people who have an ascriptive tie to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Okay, by taking a spiritual path that is connected to through the Prophet Sallallahu by person from person from person from person to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Jibril. Okay, the Ruh Al Akbar. Jibreel to Rabbul Azza to the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so these are Ahlullah eh, Allah okay, Ahl means what? means the people okay, or specifically the close people if you say the Arabs for example out of shyness you know they typically say Maka Ahlak or if, even if it's more Adib they'll say Maka Nas <laughs> okay, they say instead of saying well my wife's here I say my ahl is here, my family. Okay, this, this is usually the way that they like to express it. Okay, and, and before Islam, ahlullah meant who? It meant the Quraysh. Because they worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They worshipped, you know, 360 other idols also, but they were called, among the Arabs of the Jazeera of the peninsula, uh, they were called ahlullah because they had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was their specific uh, the, the, the one that they worshipped, and the, the, the specifically, other than, than the, the other tribes did not. So they were called Ahlullah. And after Islam came, and at al Haq was Zahq al Batil, and the Batil slithered away, and the Prophet went around the Kaaba, turning over, overturning each of the idols in turn, you know, one after another people who believe in that all religions are valid, including Islam, should take a look at this, should think about this incredible madhar of the Prophet and them turning over the idols. <coughs> if, they, if all had been sahih or valid, he wouldn't have had the bother of doing it. And after this, the people, Ahlullah, were the, were the people, especially of this nisbah, of the nisbah of tasawwuf. So when you see Ahlullah used as a, in the nomenclature, this is anybody who has taken the tariq. Okay, is Ahl Nisba. So anybody who takes the tariq is called Al Muntasib. Al Muntasib. Or Muntasiba, if they're woman. 
And this is a very high th- rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a high standard and it's a high rank because the tariq means a spiritual path, someone who uh, is ja'ala dalala ala awliya'ihi illa min haythu dalala tu As Ibn Atta'ila, the second khalifa of Abu Hassan al he said, it's his glory be to him who didn't make in the indication, who didn't lead anybody to his awliya except those who he wanted to lead to himself. Okay, and this is a, this is a lineal and spiritual connection with the awliya, all of the great shaykhs of the tariq, Abu Abbas al Mursi, Abu Hasan al Shafi'i. These, it's a sunnah in Islam to make as many friends among the mu'minin as possible. Why? Because if you die and you go to the hellfire, that they'll be able to make intercession for you. They'll say, "Where on earth is Noah?" We used to see him among us when we would you know, when we were on earth. They say, "Well, he's in the hellfire," and they'll say, "Well, Allah, please bring him out." And Allah will hear the intercession of the people. So it's a sunnah to make as many friends as possible. Okay, so that they can make intercession. So how should it be with the with the awliya? You know, how should it be with the awliya? Glory be to him who did not make the, the indication or did not make the guidance to be able to, to reach the awliya except in as much that he made it a guidance to unto himself. So Allah doesn't lead anybody to the path except that he wants them to complete it and reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in other words. <coughs> so this is part of our yaqeen about the path. I know. Allah.